just going to kick off this conference and our coverage hot with the number one performing stock in the S&P, and that is Occidental Petroleum. President and CEO Vicki Holub, our first guest of the conference. Uh, Vicki, congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, after a roller coaster a couple years before that, are you guaranteeing you will be the number one performing stock in the S&P this year? I certainly hope so. I can tell you, our, our teams are doing an incredible job with the assets. We, we have the best quality assets we've ever have, had in, a, uh, in the best portfolio, the best blend of assets. Our teams are executing incredibly well, and that's, that's what helped us this past Very year. Very different vibe this year, I think, because without diving into the deep politics of it, obviously, we've, I think we, it's fair to say we've gotten a strategy shift from 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, where they're encouraging, pushing, nudging you guys to use your money to produce more oil. So now we want more oil. Why are, you guys are growing, I think, 12% output. Not bad, but not doubling or anything. Do you have the ability to produce more oil? We do, but, but we have a value proposition that includes a, a, an active share buyback program and also a growing dividend. And we always want to make sure that we maximize our return on capital employed. So we're very careful with how we structure our capital programs on an annual basis to ensure that we still have sufficient cash to buy back shares. Why not use more of that money to drill more wells, to pump more oil, to theoretically bring down prices? Well, actually, I think prices are in a good place right now. If you're in the $75 to $80 range for oil prices, that's a sustainable price um, scenario for the industry to be, continue to be healthy. And I think gas prices at the pump are not so bad at this price. So I think it's optimum. Well, around Houston, by the way, driving around yesterday, they, they've come down a lot. Do you see, do you think that's 75, 85 oil is kind of where we're going to live for the next few years? In a year or so, if we, next year we do this again, I hope, will oil prices be higher, lower, or about the same? I do believe that the mid-cycle price of oil is close to $80, maybe 75 to 80 but I do believe that's the mid-cycle price. Used to be 60, but now it's different because the, the world is globalized. Uh, so I think that, um, that in that price regime, I think that we can balance the supply with demand over time. I do think that toward the end of this year, we'll have a little bit of a supply issue versus what demand I expect will be by the end of the year. Sounds like that could send prices a little higher. That could. What about refilling the SPR? Is that a thing that's gonna move prices? I think that, that we should have more storage in the SPR, and I think over time the administration will buy that uh, storage back, we will start to refill. Uh, it's going to be hard to do it any time in the next uh, couple of years, though, because I do believe that... A couple of years? I do believe we're in a scenario where prices will be higher because of the uh, lack of uh, supply, the, the lack of investment in our industry over the years. You've heard about that, yeah. and you know all yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do think that there's going to be, a, they'll have a difficult time here in the, in the near Because they want to buy 67 to 72. It sounds like if you're saying mid-cycle 75, maybe a little bit up, they're going to have to change that. Here's the other question. Is there, and it's, uh, we're going to talk to Exxon tomorrow and others that have bigger refinery presence. Do we even have the refining capacity? Let's say Occidental decided to produce a bunch more oil. Let's, you said, Let, you know what, let's do it. Does America have the refining capacity to even produce more gasoline? We don't actually care about oil. We care about the finished product. That's right. Well, we, we still don't have uh, any more capacity than what we had in pre-pandemic times. So we're still limited in terms of our capacity to 18 to 19 million barrels a day. Uh, so, but we can import and export. So we can balance the kind of oil that the refineries here in the United States need with uh, by importing some of the heavier oil and exporting some of our lighter oil, we can provide the blend. But in terms of uh, more refining capacity, I think that there yeah. will be some expansions, but there is likely not to be new refineries being built.